Yes, thank you. So data literacy, as well as let me just kind of club together the term AI right now, right? Because that's what's really hot and it's kind of hitting us unexpectedly uh, and it have a direct impact on education. Everybody's talking about it. It's kind of, again, like one of this kind of perfect storm situation. So for the longest time in the educational realm, it's, you know, the, the area of digital citizenship, which is kind of the term for a lot of the curriculums for the K-12, started off from, of course, you know, how do you understand computers? How do computers work? How do you develop computer programs, coding, right? That's what you know, most people are thinking of when they think, hey, what can I, what do we need to teach our kids? And then later on, there is a more of an emergence in the area of cybersecurity, right? So people are thinking about online protection for kids from the consumer side of how do you protect yourself from cyber bully or, you know, just from misinformation and, so, and stuff, but then toward developing a cyber workforce. There's a lot of just articles and news about the crisis and talent shortages for cybersecurity. And so a lot of work being done by that. Now, when it comes to data and privacy, this is where it, it's that white space. A lot of people's mind, the term privacy or data is kind of either clubbed into cybersecurity or clubbed into the ge more general coding, right? But if we look at the curriculum today, even in the coding curriculum, there's not a whole lot of data in it. Yes, you work with the data, but not in the same way of working with, say, your traditional database and your uh, business intelligence. Even at the college level, there's a lot, actually, interestingly, computer science programs that don't require SQL at all. They learn deep coding on Java and Python and all that stuff, but not so much on SQL RDBMS databases, which is very interesting, right? On the privacy side, in the same way, a lot of people think of, hey, this risk factor of cybersecurity. So they think about how do you protect with strong password, with multi-factor authentication, with encryption and stuff. But a lot of what we're seeing today, because of the pervasiveness of data sharing and the pervasiveness of AI, even if you check all of the boxes on the cybersecurity protection, that data may still be accidentally or intentionally misused in violating the privacy uh, rights of individuals. And that, again, is something that is very subtle, even for most people who are practicing in the risk domain, because it requires you to understand not just your traditional cyber risk type of a skill set or even legal aspect from a privacy compliance perspective, but also understand analytics a lot of the things that are happening today when it comes to privacy risks and harms comes from not cyber criminals, but rather people who intend, you know, are trying to do good things, but not necessarily understanding the ethics and the context of privacy, right? Open AI is now getting sued because people say, hey, you scrape the public. Yes, it's, it's called public information, but you scrape all of them and then use them to train your model. Now, the, you know, there's a couple of uh, huge newspaper media companies that are banding together and uh, potentially coming up with a lawsuit against OpenAI saying that all of our journalists' work is the reason why you've been able to train your model. So we need to benefit from the, the, the outcome of your product, if your work, right? So again, a lot of this stuff is, not, is, is subtle. It's not always addressed by the law beforehand. So this is the reason why, you know, it, it is already difficult, as you mentioned, Debbie, for professionals to grapple with this. Imagine how it is to influence the curriculum for our future generation. 